Hello everyone, this is Akai and welcome back to another episode of Fun Day Sunday and we have a replay with the tier 8 IGN DD, the destroyer, the Kagero. Honestly, my my honest opinion, it kind of sucks going from the Akatsuki to the Kagero. Um, I think Yes, the damage output that the CAG has is really fantastic. They hit harder, they're a little bit faster. Um, but you do lose a torpedo too, so you don't have triple launchers instead of dual. And instead, you have dual launchers. Uh, you do have four torpedoes on each set. So it's kind of, it, it feels like a downgrade when you go to the CAG. What really goes for it is its detect. It's 5.4 detect, the best in the game, but it's not a gunboat. Uh, it's turrets turn really, really slow, and I probably should actually show you kind of what type of battle we're in. Um, kind of a tier 10 battle. Uh, right now, I am the token tier 8 DD. Uh, all the uh, other DDs are Tier 10, Shimikaze's uh, Asasio. So, yeah, not not the best matchmaking, to say the very least. Now, I do run my Shimikaze captain on this, and obviously he's a 19-point captain, and he does have RPF, so I do know that there is obviously a destroyer, besides the fact that it is currently being capped, uh, and is being counter-capped by someone. So, yeah, we do know at least there is a destroyer in this cap. Uh, but there's also, fortunately for us, a uh, Salem. Fortunately for us, it has a very short range radar. Uh, same radar range as the Atlanta, uh, but does have that super amazing heal. Uh, now, with any uh, captain playing the IGN, should be aware that the line that the indicator doesn't always really mean that's where the ship's going to go. So I anticipate that the Salem's going to go towards the island because it is a Salem and it's not really an open but open water boat. So very good chance that's going to be actually the case. Now, the thing to keep in mind is the Shimikaze actually has a slightly better detect, or sorry, slightly worse detect than the uh, Kagero at 5.6. Do land tor two torpedoes, but just watch how much health the Salem gets back um, from that hit. So uh, easily bringing back over almost 10,000 points of health there. But it is facing off against the Jean Bart. And granted, the Jean Bart's caliber is 381s or 380s, sorry, uh, which is the same size as uh, the Turpets. So, John Bart is going to have a little bit more of a t difficult time to actually overmatch the bow armor of the Salem. I am trying to at least get some location on the Shimikaze, but as you can tell, uh, the Salem is, in fact, the closest ship to us right now at 8.5, uh, or at the very least, the Shimikaze might be around. So, things are looking pretty good for us. We're actually going to be able to take out the Salem. But our Jean Bart is going to be in a little bit of trouble it, because, well, I kind of spoiled it. Uh, the Shimikaze is actually the, the destroyer that's down here. And those torpedoes hit very, very hard. Now, our team actually manages to take out two ships. Um, and there is the Shimikaze, obviously spotted. Instantly smokes up, doesn't even want to do anything with that. Uh, did drop torpedoes on the Vladivostok. Now the reload on the torpedoes is long. Uh, once again, kind of compared to the Akatsuki, uh, which had a little bit over a minute. This has almost a minute and a half. Now I'm playing very hyper aggressive right here. Unfortunately, as you can see, we lost our Jean Bart uh, to the Shimikaze. We are going to land a torpedo hit. Uh, do get spotted there, but at least we did uh, cause some decent damage. And once again, these torpedoes hit pretty hard, uh, especially against Russian battleships, which obviously don't have a lot uh, amount of torpedo production. But now you can kind of see what's starting to happen. We're losing ships left and right. Uh, we've managed to at least bring some back, but we're still down a ship. And we still have this Vladivostok that needs to go down before I really can do anything else. So 
Once again, focusing on the torpedoes, just waiting for those torpedoes to reload. And as obviously when you're IGN, don't forget about your guns. I mean, yeah, they're not particularly great. They have a very slow reload time. They have a very long traverse time. You can just see my uh, number one turret slowly, slowly, ever so slowly traversing uh, back towards the Vladivostok. So definitely not the greatest guns in the world. That's for sure, but torpedoes are once again away, and as always, especially if you have multiple torpedo launchers, I would highly recommend spread them out unless you can guarantee that all the torpedoes are going to land in the same spot. Spread them out, it will guarantee you more hit, and once again we lost two ships, but we managed to bring back one. Uh, all the ships in B died, uh, which is actually very amusing. And fortunately for us, that Vladivostok sped up and is going to eat all torpedoes, earning us a devastating strike, making our very first kill. And now we can actually move away from A. Once again, RPF is really beneficial. And I would probably say it's a little underestimated with IGN DDs. Having RPF on a lot of DDs is really beneficial. Now, things are a little dicey for us. Uh, we actually are still once again down just uh, a ship, which is really nice because we keep losing ships almost to uh, two to one ratio. Now I am offering our team at least some assurance. I am using my RPF, kind of let them know uh, that obviously there is a destroyer over there uh, because most of our ships are battleships. Thunderer does take out the Republic. We have a Vladivostok. Uh, we do have a Des Moines, but the Des Moines is essentially going to get overwhelmed uh, by the Charles Motel. There's still a FDG, a Baltimore, two Shimas, and a Saucio B. Uh, and obviously we have that Bismarck, but I don't... I'm trying to think how well that Bismarck... Uh, de, how, how long he survives, I guess. Because I know who survives at the very end, but I don't know about the Bismarck. We'll see how long he does survive. Once again... Uh, pointing out the recent positioning, because uh, that Shimakaze probably has torpedoes loaded and is probably running the 12km torps. So if he does go through that gap up ahead, he is going to be able to drop torpedoes. But it looks like the Vladivostok is being smart and is pulling away. Now that's the main counterplay, I guess with battleships at least, is to essentially kite uh if you can kite it's going to be a less guarantee that the torpedoes are actually going to have range and actually are going to hit but obviously you're giving up ground to those enemy destroyers fortunately with the fact that uh i the lone destroyer is still around i can at least uh, assist my battleships and that's what this video is pretty much going to be focusing on is the counterplay that destroyers can offer uh, friendly battleships, and I really have no idea what that Shimakaze thought was going to happen. Drops those torpedoes, destroys that mountain there. So, yeah. Um, like I said, the main focus is essentially... And actually, I think there's a replay bug. So that Shimakaze right up ahead is still uh, floating on the water. That's actually really interesting to see. Um... So the main, main focus is the counterplay uh, against enemy destroyers, especially considering that I'm the only destroyer left on our team and our Des Moines is going to go down uh, relatively quickly. He's getting focused down uh, by the Charles Motel. Bismarck goes down to the Asasio. And yeah, look at this. The Shimmick, uh, no, this is actually the Harugumo. Sorry, this is actually the Harugumo right here. Uh, still floating on top of the water even though it's actually not really there. Lost our Des Moines, now we are currently down two ships. We do have two caps to their one, so they have to actually make the play. And once again, I'm actually kind of playing the um, spotter, the person that will help at least prevent uh, actually any hits. Baltimore gets detected. Baltimore is the only thing left with radar on the enemy team. So he is going to be by far the most, <laughs> well, 
at least with cruisers main issue obviously torpedoes uh ran out but we are gonna at least get rid of that baltimore which is gonna help bring us back up on points obviously give us a slight edge slight benefit i guess you could say uh because now we're not down as far rpf uh once again is kind of pointing in that direction i'm wanting to push south because well our thunder is kind of off by himself and as you can see he is still being torpedo torpedoed uh by a enemy shimikaze and he might need some assistance so i am going to at least push that way once again the vladivostok charles Mattel don't really need to push they have no real major need uh but surprisingly i'm not the only uh destroyer down here rpf actually kind of misjudges a little bit because any moment out there it is shimikaze pops up actually 5.4 so i'm trying to think what's right around it has to be that's also now it switches over uh detected shimikaze opens up a uh, good strategy is if a enemy destroyer opens up on you go ahead and smoke up uh because right now the shimikaze is actually being spotted by the thunderer and also it's kind of a wise idea because if i go down that is going to be the last vision i can really offer my team but i also have to be really really careful because the fdg is coming up behind us now i'm actually expecting torpedoes because this is a very very long time for me to get turned around um and I really wanted to get moving because I was really concerned that the Shimikaze might push me or might even drop torpedoes. Uh, but it doesn't look like he is, which is kind of amusing. Now, unfortunately for our, our Charles Martel here, uh, is getting focused down by the FDG. Thunder is now turning around, trying to offer assistance. Um, Things are still a little dicey. FTG is coming in range, and he does have hydro. Unfortunately, we do lose our Charles Martel. Uh, Charles Martel there uh, did spot the Shimikaze, and it does look like he did uh, push up north. Fortunately, we're not going to be in any danger uh, from the Shimikaze, but there is a smoke screen in front of us, uh, which probably is obviously one of the destroyers uh, currently being targeted by three. Uh, fortunately with the FTG down, no longer being hydroed and no longer being spotted. Now, do have to be careful because torpedoes are also a real main danger. Uh, due to the fact that there's still two Shimikaze, because the Asasio B is not really that major of a, di um, and a major, uh, threat because of its torpedoes, obviously, uh, not being able to hit a enemy destroyer. Did drop down torpedoes because once again smoke screen is a main magnet towards torpedoes and I mean the destroyers are aware that I was around that area so they should be a little bit careful sitting in that smoke screen and lo and behold they're sitting in that smoke screen do manage to land a torpedo hit do cause a flooding and obviously one of the destroyers is going to be low on health. I believe it is going to be uh, the Shimikaze uh, does look like that's to be the case. Uh, all that's left on the enemy team are the Deshores and the Charles Martel, which we know that the Charles Martel was uh, extraordinarily low on health. I believe only a few hundred points of health left. And right there, we know that the Asasio B is up north once again, offering assistance uh, to the friendly battleship as much as possible. Need to keep him alive, uh, having even hit even his low firing caliber guns is going to be really beneficial because more than likely he's going to be firing he so if i can spot them i can at least uh, allow them to actually deal some damage and i will give props to uh this vladivostok here he does a really good job especially considering uh he's had torpedoes from the shimikaze the Asasio dropped on him he actually i don't think eats any torpedoes at all right there now, once again, using RPF, really beneficial, allowing uh, our friendly team kind of be aware of the situation. But obviously, he did see the Shimikaze uh, pushing up north like he did. Now, I do get a little aggressive here. Um, oh, look at that. Incoming torpedoes uh, from the Asasio. Unfortunately, once again, the Vladivostok is being smart, pulls away. Charles Martel is detected. All we have to do is kill him, uh, and then we begin. Golden Shimekaze pops up, and 
Unfortunately for me, I'm actually going to be tag teamed here by the Asasio B, and the Asasio B actually has, can have decent guns right here. Do pop my spoke screen, because once again, uh, Shimikaze did open up and is spotted. Uh, fortunately, he came around the corner in time, and I do make an error. Um, you'll see in just a moment. I did use my damage control. I will have to say that's one thing I do have to get a little bit better is not use my damage control so early. And with the fact that the Shimikaze did drop torpedoes, I thought I'd be fine uh, exiting the smoke screen. But with the fact that I am on fire, my detect is much larger. And yes, there. this is my error right here. I should have waited um, because I am taking significant amount of damage. Damage control is off cooldown for, and we are going to actually survive this. Uh, and our points is creeping up. Uh, the Once again, the enemy destroyers, it's all in their court. They have to do something. If they do not, uh, obviously, uh, they're going to lose. Uh, Charles Martel points out that he completely forgot that I was alive. I was like, yeah, that's not particularly smart. You should always try to keep in mind uh, what ships are still around, what you need to uh, keep aware of. Um and I definitely need to keep it light, but honestly, the Shimikazes really have to do something. They have to prevent us from getting points. It looks like the Asasio B is going towards uh, A, but he's taking the very long route to get over to A. And granted, there's about three minutes left, and I don't think even if they tried to cap all three caps, they would be able to get back. But as you can see, B is being uh, capped right now, which does mean the Shimikaze is around. Once again, never, never forget your guns because look at this. 921 health shots off and really one shell. Okay, let's do this again. Let's actually kill this Shimikaze. There we go. Kill number two, 116,000 points of damage and we are going to win this battle in about 30 seconds. Uh, all I have to do is avoid these torpedoes uh, and we will be good. I've been actually having slight issues with getting torped uh, from the rear, but fortunately managed to dodge it, and that is going to be a, a victory for us uh, in this battle, and a good, I guess, example of destroyer play versus destroyer player uh, play. Uh, does look like the Asasio B gets into A, but it's too little too late. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.